Along to you here this morning, Flagler County deputies hope a 17 year old girl is getting the help that she needs. Caught on body camera, a deputy negotiates with her for hours to stop her from jumping off a bridge. Take a look. And you can just hear the distress in her voice. You can also hear Deputy First Class Rainey talking with her as Deputy Jenkins holds her hand. This happened at Palm Coast Parkway at I-95. Deputies asked her about her family and tried to calm her down so that they could get a fire engine ladder there in time. The teenager was reunited safely with her parents. But that just raises a lot of questions, right? Spotting signs of distress in teenagers can be really hard to do. Many won't share mental health concerns with their parents or anybody close to them. Joining us now is licensed mental health counselor Chantella Boss. Chantella, good morning. It's good to see you this morning. Good morning, Danielle. You know, one of the things I always talk about are the terrible twos and the terrible teens, right? And so, you know, all kids go through these phases, but how do we know when it's more than a phase, when it's something much more serious? Well, it is something we really want to make sure we focus on with teen girls, especially boys too. But, you know, during this pandemic, it, there's been about a 3.7% rise in ER visits for young women for suicide attempts. So we really want to be keeping that conversation open with our girls and really watching for signs. If, you know, obviously if they're depressed, they're going to have some maybe withdrawing behaviors from certain friends. Maybe they're spending times with friends that we, we are a little bit concerned about. They're getting involved in drugs or alcohol. Maybe they're dressing differently. They could have poor hygiene, um, not taking care of themselves, talking about death, fantasizing about death, hmm. kind of wanting to to, to disappear or go away saying these type of statements. So these are all things to look for, self-harming behaviors, all very concerning. But a lot of these things do happen in, in teenage girls around 12 to 17 because of the hormones changing and the, the pressures that they have on them. And you know, you mentioned it at the top, right? Suicide rates among teen girls did spike, of course, during the pandemic. And when we talk about these spots, uh, spotting these signs that we should look for in both teen girls and teen boys, you know, how do you know, Chantella, when it goes from Mom, I'm not feeling good. I'm feeling a little depressed. And you're talking to your child to maybe your child needing to talk to somebody else. Well, like I said earlier, obviously you see signs of depression with withdrawal, dropping grades, lack of appetite, not sleeping. But when you see the extreme signs, such as, um, you know, self harming behaviors, thoughts of wanting to hurt oneself, um, increased drug and alcohol abuse, um, spending time with people that are not healthy, lots of time online, um, in disclosing conversations, researching death or ways to hurt themselves. You definitely want to seek mental health professional at this point. Um, and if you feel like there are just a little few signs of, of distress or anxiety, kind of monitor it. But a lot of times with teen girls, the reason that there is such a high, higher rate in attempts for teen girls is because that is actually a way that they're asking for help. It, it's kind of their way of expressing their vulnerability. Boys don't really do that the same way as girls do. Um, girls are, are more expressive emotionally. But, so when you see them acting out or if they were to have a suicide attempt, we have to take that very, very seriously and not just say, oh, they're asking for attention or whatever. Well, they are. And they it's because they need help. It's because they need support. It's because they need to see someone and really get more assistance that so they're dealing with a lot right now. I need to feel comfortable being able to reach out at least to their parents so that they can get them the help they need. So a really important discussion. Chantal Abbas, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Danielle. Amy. There is a new way for restaurants to fill staffing shortages.